everyone. We're so glad that you're joining us again this week. Um, we are going to start with a passage um, from Daniel, uh, chapter 3. And um, we're actually going to be discussing um, verses 1 through 18, but we kind of felt like that was a lot to read. So um, Rob is going to just kind of shorten and condense it for you. And then I'm going to pick up where he leaves off and read a couple scriptures to you. Uh, so basically, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, King Nebuchadnezzar, um, he decides that he wants to make this huge statue made of gold. Um, and it's, it's really large, and he sends out this decree after he makes this statue, and he basically says that everybody in the land, every time you hear this trumpet uh, you know, sound, everybody in the land has to bow down before this golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, and whoever doesn't fall down um, and immediately worship this statue, this idol, um, is going to be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. And so the, the decree goes out for the whole land, and he finds out that three of the advisors, these are actually uh, advisors within um, King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, his administration, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they decide they're, they're Jewish uh, captives, uh, Israelites that have been in captivity under King Nebuchadnezzar, and they refuse to bow down to this king and basically say that, you know, we, we only bow our knee to one God, and it's not this statue, and so we're just not going to do it. Um, and King Nebuchadnezzar says, if you don't worship this, then, you know, you know the consequences. You're going to be thrown into this fiery furnace. So, if we pick up in verse 16. Yes. So here we go. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to talk about this anymore. We might be thrown into the blazing furnace, but the God we serve is able to bring us out of it alive. He will save us from your power. But we want you to know this, your majesty. Even if we knew that our God wouldn't save us, we still wouldn't serve your gods. We wouldn't worship the God statue that you set up. Can you keep going? No, that, that's, yeah. that's really good. Um, I love this passage, and, and all of this kind of me picking this passage, um, and I said this in the text to you, came out of the thoughts that I had about your mom and her whole um, adventure with cancer yeah. um, and my own health issues. And... I've had um, friends, I've had pastors, I've had family members tell me that um, I could be healed of my disease if I had enough faith, and that I haven't been healed because, um, because I don't have enough faith. And... When I first heard those comments, um, I didn't really know, know what to say because I feel like I, I mean, Jesus said I need the faith of a mustard seed to move a mountain. And I feel like I've got probably more than that, at least a corn kernel of, of faith. <laughs> but um, I, that, that really hurt me when people would say that. And, and, and when I had discussions like that about not having faith, and that's the reason why God has chosen not to heal me and it kind of this passage really is what rings true in my head and in my heart now um you know in, in verse 18 you know here they're they're the three guys are refusing to bend their knee to god and i know the circumstances are different between you know what your mom and i go through and and um you know what they were going to, they were threatened because they were told they shouldn't bow down. But I think the answer to prayer is, is the same in that God's name, God's glory is going to be manifest um, no matter what happens. And their response, you know, to say, no, we're not going to bend our knee and you can throw us, you know, I, I, we believe that God is going to deliver us. We, we claim that 
But even if he doesn't, even if he chooses not to deliver us mm -hmm. from the fiery furnace, mm -hmm. and this thing was so hot that the guys that opened up the door to the furnace, those people were consumed by the flames. Like the people that just opened up the doors. Um, so this thing was like fiery hot, like hotter than anything we can think of. And seeing that and the response is, God's going to deliver us. We, we believe that God's going to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still, not, we're still going to only bow to the one true God. And for people that go through times of hardship and you don't understand why, when Job was, you know, he pretty much loses his entire family, his friends, his, his money, his possessions, everything, he loses all of it. And... You know, his response is the righteous response. You know, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. God's name be praised. Um, even going all the way to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, praying, Lord, please, if it's your will. He prays multiple times, if it's your will, take this cup from me, take this cup of suffering, but yet your will be done. And I think it's so important for us to remember that if we are disciples, if we are not just along for the ride, you know, and getting our fire insurance to get out of hell or get out of jail free card, um, if we are true disciples of Christ and our goal in life, if I am a supporting actor in my own life to bring fame to his name, then I need to be okay with whatever course that takes. And if that means that, uh, that I get cancer, then that means that I get cancer. Mm -hmm. If it means that God delivers me and heals me and uses that as, you know, uh, uh, a story of joy to other generations, then that's what it means. If it means he takes my life, that's what it means. I have to be okay with no matter what. I remember when I was first diagnosed, I was um, 16, and I remember sitting in the pastor's office at the church we were going to with my parents, and I remember telling my, my mom, and uh, my mom was in tears um, at, at this diagnosis that I had gotten, and I smiled and said, it's okay, Mom, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go to heaven if God calls me. And that just made her cry even more. Um, but that's really the attitude we have to take and every day wake up with the knowledge that this is his day. I give it to him. He's going to deliver me in whatever fashion he chooses. But even if he doesn't, I'm going to worship him. Well, I just don't know that I need to say anything else to add to that. <laughs> that was just incredible. Um an incredible testimony of like your life and how God is working. Um, back in, I definitely remember when my mom was like, like full fledged into everything, cancer in this past year and a half, two years. Um, and people just coming to me, like it was even before because with, with multiple myeloma, like if it's, if it's not to a certain percentage, they just watch it. And so you just have it. And it's like, you know that you have it, but there's nothing you can do about it until it gets to a certain point to, um, and once it gets to that point, then they can, uh, give you treatments for it and usually heal you from it. Um, but so in the, in the waiting process, you're just sitting there knowing that you have a cancer that's slowly growing in your body and you can't do anything until it gets to the starting point pretty much. Um, and I remember people sending me messages, like good friends of mine that I've had for years that were like, if your mom just comes to our church service and does A, B, C, D, then she'll be good. Or, we'll lay hands uh, on and if, if, the, if she comes and does this or just experiences this, then we know she'll be healed and yada, yada. Like, no, no. And I know it took her a while. Um, and like, she... I don't, the t-shirts that we made for her, like, have a uh, deer on the back of it, um, because she was, like, driving home one day just distraught because she's in the waiting period, and 
Um, it's just like, Lord, like if you are going to heal me from this, like please just allow me to see mm -hmm. a deer cross the road because you see that in Louisiana all the time. Right. And like, so that's easy. And so <laughs> her whole ride home, she didn't see a single deer at all at night. And she was like, what the heck? And so went home, forgot something, went back to town to get it. And in the middle of town, she sees a deer cross the road. And so, like, and that happened to her on multiple occasions and just was a constant symbol to her, for her, whether or not it's from the Lord or gave her peace because it was something that she needed at the moment. Like, those, that's what heals you and that's what gives you hope in your journey of whatever your, your sickness is, whether or not it's like an actual health issue or just like a spiritual health issue. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. just those small moments along the way. Even like, depression. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, the, that's I just feel like that's how the Lord pushes you through so many things. Um, it's just it's truly incredible to me. It's really a matter of perspective and how you look at things and and who you're living your life for. And it's like we were saying in the last devotional about how you know those of us that that are you know just kind of trying to live a good life probably be kind of disappointed when we get to heaven and we find out that no it's all about relationship with god it's all about bringing him glory so that the time that we spent here you know whether it's in success in wealth or it's in poverty and sickness uh, sounds like marriage vows uh, <laughs> but if you know it doesn't it doesn't matter how you look at things yeah. um, no matter what station you're in if you're living according to, you know, that relational idea as far as I'm, I'm here to bring glory to God. And however that happens, um, I texted my son, um, been doing prayer walks at Restoration Park, and I texted my son uh, this was a few weeks ago, and I said, when I'm gone, how will you remember me? How will you, you know, if you were to give a eulogy, what would you say? is representative of my life and the song um, i don't even know the name of the song but just i think it's by mercy me that talks about you know i don't want fame i don't want recognition all i want is for people to i don't want to leave leave a legacy i don't want people to remember me i just want jesus i want him only jesus only jesus um and yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's what I want. Like, I don't, anything I do in my life, I want it to be uh, as a, a symptom, uh, a result of, of putting him first and putting him foremost. So whether I'm sick in bed with, you know, a tube down my throat, um, which has happened multiple times, um, and I'm, I can still remember signing to nurses and talking to them while I can't speak about Jesus. And that's what I want. I want, it, I want him to be the center. So. Mm. Well, and I think that's a great focus, like, for anyone to have, and such a good, a, a good representation of that, like is you because you do do that and so i cannot speak on it any further unless we'd like a whole video of waterworks between the two of us today uh <laughs> wow well, but i have i know this is shorter but rob is straight to the point today and so <laughs> i just don't know how much more i can add to that other than just to be moved by the spirit from it and um, i really hope that anyone else is too so i just want to close today with prayer um God, I just thank you so much for the opportunities that you give us to um, change our perspective and live our life for people um, to see you more clearly because of how you are playing a role in our lives. And I just pray that we allow you to um, take the main main character role in this movie, as Rob was talking about, and just to um, be the forefront of everything that happens in our life. And I just pray that... Um, when we come into contact with people, that's what we see. Um, God, I just thank you so much for Rob and his um, ability to share life today and just to share um, how you touched him and spoken to his life. And I just thank you for all that you do and for your son that saves us. And I know you pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, we hope you have a great week and we will see you next week.